as the domestic scene takes a back seat, the Nations League is in command with some very, very big games, important ones, of course, for this tournament. We'll get into it next. Today we're taking a look at match day number three, I think, part two over in the Nations League. And we'll get to that in just one second. If you're new to the channel, smash your subscribe button. Keep your bang up today with all things Nations League related, Blackburn Rovers related, war football related. That's right, we've got it all here under a one Arowski. Just yesterday we took a look back at, of course, your picks and all that kind of jars. And, of course, just a handful of games that were taking place on the uh, on the 9th of August. October, I think today, or was it, sorry, the 10th of October, today we're taking a look at the games uh, that are going to be taking place on the 11th of October, I believe that's right, that's right, so let's get into that, just take a big shout out, of course, to the Patreon gang, yes, indeed, EO. Uh, of course, to support the channel behind the scenes, there's 18 beautiful specimens out there, and if you want to make it back up to 90, or maybe even 20, check out the descriptions down below, patreon.com forward slash roadoverseas, also check me out on Twitter, Facebook, and all that kind of jazz, looking for, for, for helping hands to kick on the channel up to another level, and hopefully you guys can do just that. Um, anyway, ooh, let's get into it, of course, and take a little look at, uh, at just a reminder of what the situation is, of course, in the Prediction League. Uh, so as it stands, still plenty of time, of course, still plenty of games to get involved with. Let's just remind ourselves, of course, of who is the current Prediction King or Queen over in the Nations League. Well, here it comes at you. Uh, just a reminder, it's Bossio Mata leading the charge at the moment. He is your pick, Aruni King. Kostas K is in second uh, with Bianca Molna uh, Ultra Army in the top five. Then uh, as we look at the further down, Elgin Cow's up there. Uh, Mate Nifa Heaver's not too far away either. So, respect to all you guys. Well done to all of them. We're going to look at your picks today. Today is all about games. Games, games, games. And we're going to talk about a whole bunch of them. And we're going to start with, oh my goodness gracious me, with uh, Kazakhstan. Oh, yes. Of course, the new flipping Borat movie is uh, uh, upon us. But we're not talking about Borat. We're going to try and find the stinking cost. There we go. Uh, Kazakhstan taking on Albania. This will be the third time that these two sides have played uh, against each other. But there's been no wins for Kazakhstan. It's been two wins out of two. Uh, for Albania on this bad boy. Last time they played each other was back in the 2004-2005 uh, World Cup qualifying campaign. And I'm going to try and find uh, the, the the game itself. Okay, uh, in fact, though, the, the last time they played each other was in 2005 in Albania. It was a 2-1 win for Albania. Florian Matiaj on the score sheet. Adrian Budadani as well on the score sheet for Albania. Masef Nikovosev on the score sheet for Kazakhstan. Last time they played each other in Kazakhstan was also a 1-0 win for Albania. Coming into this, Kazakhstan and Albania both uh, one win out of two. Uh, Kazakhstan beating Lithuania away. Uh, Albania picking up a win against uh, Belarus in Belarus as well. So the last time these two side plays did uh, um, were, were defeats, of course. Heading into this, the bookies odds. I'll tell you the bookies odds on this one if I can find them. They, they, they might not all have bookies odds. Uh, and this one is not. Oh, they do. They do. Eleven to five. Eleven to five for Kazakhstan for the victory. Twenty-one to ten is your draw. Thirty to ten is a, a, a zero away win. I like Albania. I think they're a decent little unit um, on their day. Um, but Kazakhstan are also a little bit of a complicated little bad boy, and I think I think it's too close to call, especially in Kazakhstan. So I'm going to go with the draw on this one. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of opting out, uh, you know, kind of laying low on this one. I think uh, it could go either way. Um, next up, an old bit, a little battle of Britainish on this one. Ireland taking on, of course, Wales. An impressive uh, 18 times, just 18 times. Eight, uh, six wins for for Ireland, uh, seven wins uh, for Wales, and four draws between these two. Um, Heading into this, though, the past the past six sees two wins for Ireland, two wins for Wales, and two draws last time. It was also in the Nations League, and it was in Ireland. It was a 1-0 win for Wales. Harry Wilson on the score sheet on this one. Heading into this, Wales has started off the old Nations League in tip-top form without conceding a goal, beating uh, Finland and also beating Bulgaria as well. Meanwhile, Ireland have uh, they've opened up their account uh, with a draw, uh, but they also opened, uh, if they, but they follow that with a defeat at home uh, to Finland as well. So it's not a great start for them on this one. Heading into this, the bookies are 13-8. Uh, for Republic of Ireland, 2-1 is your 15-8. Uh, is your your away win for Wales on this one? I, I, there's just something about Wales at the moment. I think they've they've got a bit the bit between the teeth. They've got more creative players. Uh, they might not have Gareth Bale, I don't think, selected for this one. But I'm going to go with Wales on this one to take it to the house. 2-1 win to make it three wins out of spit on the spin for Wales over in the Nations League. 
Uh, next up, we have uh, Armenia taking on Georgia. This will be the sixth time that these two sides have locked horns. The previous five been one win for uh, Armenia, three wins for Georgia, and one draw. Uh, the last time pictures, but back in 2011, it was a friendly. Uh, do I have the goal score on that one? It was a 2 1 win going in favour of Georgia. Alexander Ishvili on the score sheet, David Seriadze as well. Egder Machachanov on the score sheet for Armenia. Heading into this, uh, Georgia unbeaten so far in their group, uh, picking up a win against Estonia, picking up a, uh, a draw against against North Macedonia. Meanwhile, Armenia have also opened up their account with a win. Uh, well, they, 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 they've got one win out of two, beat Estonia. They did lose to North Macedonia away. Uh, so this will be a, a little bit tricky for them to, to, to hold off Georgia. But, it's, you know, it's, it's one of those. If Georgia with the form at the moment, Armenia, realistically, I think they're the stronger football nation at the moment. 9 to 5 is your uh, odds for the Armenian victory. 31 to 20 for Georgia. 21 to 10 is your away win. Uh, Georgia may have got the back-to-back -back wins on this one, but I'm going to stick with Armenia with a 2-0 win to take it uh, Make it an interesting group, of course, uh, between these two. Next up, Bosnia and Herzegovina taking on the Netherlands. A bit of a powerhouse, this one. Uh, these two sides have played each other. I don't think they've played each other. I think this will be the first time, according to my knowledge, that these two sides have locked horns, as these uh, uh, nations, of course. Um, is that true? I believe it's true. Heading into this, uh, the Bosnians have yet to, yet to really get going. Just one draw so far. I guess it's which is a respectable result, of course, uh, in a group like this. Uh, they did lose to Poland last time around. Meanwhile, uh, the Dutchies come into this with a win over the Poles. Uh, they also lost to Italy. It's so tight in this group. It could go either way. It really could. The bookies' odds on this one. Uh, what do they have? They are 15 to 4 for Bosnia Herzegovina. 30 to 5 is your draw. 11 to 8 on Netherlands are your favourites. With Kuman in charge. Is it Kuman? Uh, it's not. It's De Boer. It's De Boer. Frank De Boer. I think Frank De Boer is leading the charge at the moment with the Dutchies. Um, I'm not that biggest believer on it at the moment. I'm going to go with Bosnia Herzegovina with an upset, perhaps, with a 2 0 win. Take it to the house and again, opening up a kind of whoop ass on this group. Next up, Croatia against the Swedes, of course. Uh, difficult one, of Cool. These two, uh, this, this will be the fifth time that these two ties have locked on the previous four. Three wins for Croatia, one win for Sweden, and no draws. Uh, the, the, in those last four, um, that's not a place there was a friendly. It was in Croatia. It was a 3 1 win for Sweden. Slatan Ibrahimovic on score sheet last time with a couple of goals. Jonas Olsen with a big fat OG for Croatia. Last time played each other in a competitive environment was uh, in the World Cup qualifying campaign in Croatia and was a 1 0 win for Croatia. Darjo Zirna on the score sheet for Croatia. Heading into this, uh, both sides looking very, very rough at the moment. They need points. Both of them are heading into this with zero points. Back-to-back -back defeats for both of them uh, as they move to match day. 11-10 on for Croatia for the victory. 9-4 is draw. 10-3. You're away win on this one for Sweden. I'm sticking with... Uh, I think I'm going with that as well. I'm going with Croatia with the victory. 3-1 in the end. Uh, next, of course, is England up against Belgium. Uh, this will be the uh, 24th time that these two sides have locked horns. 15 wins for England, 3 wins for Belgium, and 5 draws. However, however, I'm sure the boot is firmly on the other foot at the moment. The last 5 sees 2 wins for England, 2 wins for Belgium, and 1 draw. The last time played each other was in Belgium. Belgium, um, and it was a World Cup, uh, was it in Belgium? Was it a Belgium? Uh, or was it in the World Cup? Um, it could be. I think it was a, a World Cup qualifying campaign match, I think. 2-0 uh, win for Belgium in the end. Thomas Meunier and Eden Hazard uh, to give Belgium the win last time. Page of the, in England, it uh, was a 1-0 win for Belgium. Also in that same year, uh, 28th of June, uh, Adrian Zizanova is on the score sheet for Belgium. Heading into this, back-to-back uh, -back wins for Belgium. Uh, a smash in Iceland and also a, a nice uh, performance against uh, Denmark 2-0. Uh, England opened up the campaign with a nervy win over Iceland and a back-to-back -back, uh, and a, a not-so-great draw against Denmark. Only conceded one. Only scored one goal in those two games, conceded zero. Heading into this, the bookies odds 11-8 uh, for Belgium, 2-1 is uh, sorry, 11-8 for England, 2-1 for, for Belgium and 9-4 is your draw. Not a big believer at the moment. I think I think the wind is going out of the sails of England at the moment. They're in a bit flat. They've got some really good, exciting players, and the pool of players that are available to Gareth Southgate is 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 quite impressive. Um, but they need a bit of confidence. They need to kick up the arse. They need a they need a bit. Uh, you know, I guess this tournament. I think this tournament coming up Euro 2020 next summer um, will be massive. I think if England fluff their lines and they don't start to turn on the performances, even in the Nations League, we could we could see a bit of a, a, a mass change going on with England. Uh, there are some good managers out there that could be uh, could, that could kick, a, kick England up the, up, up the jack sea. Uh, anyway, 0-0 for me. Uh, Estonia, uh, where are they taking on? Estonia taking on um, North Macedonia. This will be the fifth time that these two sides have locked horns. No wins for Estonia. Three defeats. Oh, sorry, three wins for... Uh, uh, so no wins for Estonia. Three wins for North Macedonia and one draw. Goodness gracious me, that was a bit tricky to get out of my head. Uh, the, and then those last uh, few, few three matches have been... Um, 
the last time Persia that was in North Macedonia was a one-one draw in the Euro qualifying campaign back in 2007. Uh, Goran Maznov on the score sheet from North Macedonia, Radio Perolia on the score sheet for Estonia, all the way back, of course. Heading into this North Macedonia, unbeaten so far in the Nations League in their respective group, of course. Um, uh, Estonia back-to-back -back defeats, yet to score a goal on this one, and it's going to be a tricky wicket against these guys, of course. Heading into this, the bookies are seven to two for Estonia, five six to five on for North Macedonia, twelve to five is your draw. Um, yeah, I'm going to go with uh, North Macedonia victory. I'm going to give Estonia a goal at the very least uh, to get over the line on this one. Next up, of course, we have Finland taking on Bulgaria. Uh, these two sides have played nine, eight times uh, the previously. Nothing for Finland. Uh, seven wins for Bulgaria and one draw. Uh, that's the, the, the previous record. The last the last time, according to my knowledge, they played each other back in 2008. It was a 2-1 win for Bulgaria in Bulgaria. Zurgan Lazov on the score sheet for Bulgaria and Genchev as well. Uh, Yari Lipman on the score sheet for Finland. Of course, ex IX, ex Liverpool man there. Heading into this, uh, Finland, one win out of two. Uh, meanwhile, Bulgaria, just one draw out of the past two games. Uh, scoring just the one goal as well. So lacking goals at the moment. Bulgaria lacking confidence, maybe. Uh, alone a turn on for Finland. They are the favourites. Alone five is your draw. 72 is your away win on this one. I think I've also gone uh, with Finland on this one. 2-1 one win. Uh, to take it to the house. And again, uh, to get themselves back in contention for this group. Lithuania taking on Belarus. Uh, this coming um, uh, this uh, match day over in the Nations League. This will be the ninth time that these two sides play. The previous eight. Uh, one win for uh, Lithuania. Four wins for Belarus. And three draws. Uh, the last six of those, or the last bunch, should I say, uh, uh, last four. One win for, for Lithuania, uh, two wins for Belarus, and one draw last time. It was in Belarus, it was a 1-1 one -one draw. It was a friendly back in 2012. Stanislav Dragon on score sheet for Belarus. Ramanus Radekovidis on score sheet for Lithuania. Last time played in Lithuania was a 2-0 win for Belarus. Uh, heading into this, of course, uh, Lithuania, one win out of two in the All Nations League. Same could be said for Belarus. One win out of two. Belarus beating Kazakhstan. Uh, Lithuania beating Albania on this one. Uh, heading into this tough one to call this one. 12-5 for Lithuania. 11-5 is your draw. 65 is Belarus. They are the favourites on this bad boy. They are the favourites on this one. I've gone with the thick. I've gone with the draw. Yes, I'm going with the nil-nil draw. I can't separate the two sides. Can you make sure you get your pickaroonies in, of course, for this big old match day here? Uh, Norway taking on Romania uh, as well on this match day. Loads of games, loads of games. 30, uh, this, this will be the 14th time that these two sides have locked horns. Two wins for Norway, four wins for Romania, and seven, goodness gracious, draws between these two. Uh, and then in the last four seasons, one win for Norway, Norway, nothing for Romania, and three draws. Last time pleasure was in Romania. It was in the Euro. Back in 2019, qualifying campaign, 1-1. Uh, final score: Alexander Mitratra on the score sheet for Romania. Alexander Solov uh, uh, on the score sheet for Nor Norway. That was Alexandru Mitratra. Just in case you you, you got your Mitratas mi mixed up there. Uh, so 1-1 one, one in the end uh, in Romania. Last time played in Norway was a 2-2 draw uh, back in 2019. Uh, Tarek Olajosu on the score sheet for Norway. Ma Martin Odegaard as well, giving them a 2-0 no lead. But Claudio Cagliasso got had other plans. Made it 2-2 uh, in the end on that bad boy. Uh, and heading into this, uh, Romania unbeaten so far in the Nations League picking up a draw against Northern Ireland and also a win against Austria meanwhile Norway coming to this uh, one win out of two losing to Austria but smashing uh, of course in Northern Ireland not too long ago 5-1 uh, uh, on this one but heading into this uh, even Stevens for Norway 11-5 is your draw 3-1 is your away and I'm a big believer that this is Norway's year uh, at least to get through uh, to the latter stages of this Nations League or to do very very well and also hopefully do we get to see them in Euros I really bloody hope that I think they'll, they, they, they'll be locking horns if they're going to get to the Euros they're going to be locking horns with Scotland along the way in the playoffs and we've got that covered as well right here on the channel so make sure you check that bad boy out 2-1 win for me for Norway here we go into the back end of course more more games uh, France taking on Portugal for the 26th time 18 wins for France 6 wins for Portugal and 1 draw the last uh, time that these two locked signs about the last 6 Caesar 4 wins for France 1 win for Portugal and 1 draw last time played was in the Euros possibly in the Euros itself a 1-0 win for Portugal in extra time 109th minute to give Portugal the victory I think they went on and bloody won the pissing thing that's right um, heading into this back to back wins for both of these two sides 2 out of 2 Portugal beating Croatia and of course Sweden scoring 6 goals along the way uh, France beating Sweden and also Croatia scoring five goals along the way uh, heading into this bad boy. The bookies also find this tough, but I think they'll probably go with France. Uh, what do we have on this one? Do we, where, do we, where do we have it? Where do we have it? Where do we have it? Do we have it? Yes, we do. It's uh, 2019 uh, uh, on. France are your favourites. 21 to 10 is your draw. 10 to 3 is your away win. I like Portugal. I really do, but only I think they're, they're, they're looking to get points from these when they come back around in Portugal. So I'm going to go with a 3 1 win for France. Take it to the house and take a command of this group. Greece will take it on Moldova this coming uh, uh, match day on uh, of the Nations League. This will be the sixth time that these two sides locked on. Four wins for Greece. Uh, one, uh, nothing for Moldova and zero, uh, one draw. Uh, the last uh, couple games, last four, three wins for Greece. Nothing for Moldova and one 
one draw last time played. There was that draw back in 2009 in Moldova. Vladio Adronic on the score sheet and Tonyamis Gurkas on the score sheet for Greece. Last time played in Greece. It was back in 2008. It was a 3-0 win for Greece. Kiaskakis with a couple of goals and Kosta Nukunikis on the score sheet for uh, Greece. Heading into this, Greece have started off the, the Nations League in unbeaten fire. Uh, star one win, one draw. Meanwhile, uh, their opposition Moldova just one draw out of the past two games. Uh, so a bit wobbly for them. Looking for a win. Uh, 92 on for Greece for the for the, for the odds. Red Hot favourites 90 to 4 is your draw. 8 to 1 is your away win. I'm sticking with Greece with the form book, uh, which make a 2 0 win for me to take it to the house. Iceland take it on Denmark, of course. The other game in England, in England's group. Now, this will be the 22nd time these two sides have played uh, it will be uh, 18 wins so far for Denmark nothing for Iceland and three draws wow uh, one sided is, is is the understatement heading into this so the last six these six wins out of six for Denmark last time I played each other was in 2016 it was a friendly it was a 2-1 win for Denmark in Denmark uh, Angor Ingi Tos Dostan on score sheet for Iceland last time I played each other in Iceland was a 2-0 win in the Euros qualifying campaign back in 2011 last time Shona and Christian Eriksson on score sheet for uh, Denmark I think that was prior to their their their, their sort of um, you know, revolution, so to say. But anyway, both sides heading into this without a win. Uh, Denmark did pick up a point against England at home, uh, but this game is away over in Iceland. Of course, Iceland so far uh, been wobbly. They did an okay result against well, an okay performance against England, losing just the one nil. Um, but uh, I think this could be this could be a point where they, 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 a match that they could get something out of this. Uh, Bookies odds uh, forty to five for, for Iceland, twenty five is your draw, nineteen to twenty, twenty nineteen. Denmark are the favourites for this one, but I think I'm going to give Iceland the benefit of the doubt with a two one win to take it over. I take three points, and again, uh, make this group a little bit more spicy. Of course, it's just, depending on the, the England result, if it goes in favour of Belgium, it's going to be definitely one-sided. But if England can pull it out of the bag, it will open up this work, this this group. Next up, Israel. Taking on the Czechs. Hopefully their COVID issue has been sorted out. This will be the third time, just the third time that these two sides have played. It's actually two wins out of two so far for the Czechs. Um, a closer look at those games. Both of them were in uh, the Czech Republic back in 2012 and back in 2000. Uh, and it's been a 2 1 win with last time around. Milan Barros on the score sheet. Goodness gracious me. David Lafetta as well with Itai Shrekta on the score sheet for Israel. Eight years ago. Heading into this, Israel back to back draws for them, yet to suffer defeat. Meanwhile, Czech actually, the Czech Republic coming to this above Israel in the table with one win uh, out of two, losing to Scotland last time around with a COVID issue. But they did open up their campaign with a 3 1 win. Over Slovakia. Uh, the bookies odds. Uh, 7 to 4 for Israel. 11 to 5 is your away. 8 to 5 is your away. I think the checks, checks with edge this one just on the uh, on the form books. Uh, I think they edge it with me with a 2 1 win. I think, uh, again, strongest. If they have the strongest team available, it should be a 1 1 1 sided affair. I think checks, just checks would take it. Uh, Israel have been decent, or, you know, steady, but uh, I think the, the, the checks will be proof too much for them. Kosovo taking on uh, Slovenia. This will be the first time the, the, the Kosovo as a nation will take on Slovenia, according to my knowledge. But heading into this, Kosovo need some points. They have opened up their account with one draw out of the two games. Uh, meanwhile, Slovenia looking good at the moment, unbeaten out of two games, picking up a win against Moldova and a draw against Greece. Um, heading into this, the bookies odds. What do we have on, on Kosovo? What do we have? Uh, 5 to 2 for Kosovo for the victory. 23 to 20 is uh, Slovenia. They look like the favourites. 21 to 10 is your draw. I still like Kosovo. I really do. And I do expect them to get something out of this game. I'm going with a 2 0 win for Kosovo to upset the odds. Well, no, not really. Upset the bookies and perhaps as to take home the three points. Northern Ireland taking on Austria for the 12th time this will be uh, the previous 11 sees 4 wins for Northern Ireland 4 wins for Austria and 3 draws the last uh, 5 games sees five, uh, 3 wins for Austria nothing for Northern Ireland and 2 draws uh, last time played was in Northern Ireland it was in the Nations League as well it was a 2-1 win for Austria uh, Xavier Schlanger Valentino Lazaro on score sheet for Austria Corey Evans respect uh, Rover on the score sheet there on the 57th minute for Northern Ireland um, so yeah it's been it's been a while uh, let's take a closer look uh, I can't remember the last time Northern Ireland beat, did beat Austria uh, it's probably it's probably a long 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 time ago before the 80s before the 80s anyway Northern Ireland come into this uh, just one point in the past uh, possible six uh, meanwhile Austria come into this uh, one win out of possible two there uh, bookies odds it's tight it's in Northern Ireland so they give them a little bit of, of, of an edge on this one but uh, three to one for Northern Ireland even Stevens for Austria 11 to five to draw the bookies think it's going to Austria I think I'm going that way too no I'm not I'm not I'm going with Northern Ireland I'm going with the, with an upset perhaps with a 2-1 win uh, for Northern Northern Ireland. Uh, next up, uh, of course, what do we have? What do we have on this bad boy? Next up, we have Poland up against uh, 
Uh, Italy, of course. Now, these two sides locking on for the 17th time. The previous 16 goes. Uh, six wins for Italy, three wins for Poland, and seven draws uh, into the last uh, sort of six between these two sides. One win for Poland, three wins for Italy, and two draws. Last time, it was in Poland. It was in the Nations League, and it was a 1 0 win for Italy. Cristiano Biriagini back in October 2018. Um, so they'll fancy the chances. Of course, Italy unbeaten so far, picking up a draw against Bosnia and a win against the Dutch. Uh, meanwhile, Poland also doing okay. One win and uh, two, losing to the Dutch, picking up a win against Bosnia Herzegovina. Uh, uh, the bookies odds on this one. What do we have on this? Um, we have 15 to 4 for... F no, we don't. No, we don't. We have, we're have. we looking for Poland. We're looking for Poland. Uh, 11 to 4 for Poland. 9 to 4 is your draw. 11 to 10. Italy are your favourites on this one. Uh, it's tight. I think Poland at home are a difficult unit. And I think they're going to get something out of this game. I'm going to go with a 2-2 draw. Uh, and everyone will take up a point. I think Italy will be content with that. Uh, win your home games. Draw your away games. And you'll be A-OK. -okay. Russia uh, taking on Turkey for the seventh time. The previous six. These four wins for, for Russia. Nothing for Turkey. Turkey and two draws. Wow, that's an interesting stat there. Um, heading into the last four, two wins there for Russia, two draws. Last time pleasure was in Russia in the Nations League, and it was a two-nil win for Russia. Mio Maka, Roman Nishtanda on the score sheet with Denis Cheryshev as well. Heading into this, the bookies' odds or, or the previous couple of games, back-to-back -back wins for Russia, beating Serbia and Hungary in the process, scoring six goals as well. Uh, Turkey yet to score a goal uh, and they yet, yet to get themselves really up and moving. They did pick a point last time around against Serbia, but they opened up their account with a loss against Hungary. Bookies' odds will probably go with Russia. 11 to 10 for them, 21 to 10 is your draw, 11 to 4 is your long shots. Turkey looks shy at the moment. I really, I'd hate to say it, but they do. Uh, and, and usually, of course, I think they rely heavily on their, the, the, the fans. I don't think they get fans as well over in Turkey, but it's going to be in Russia anyway. 2 1 win for Russia to the house. Scotland taking on Slovakia. Now, this will be the uh, third time that these two sides have played the previous two. One win apiece. Uh, one win for Scotland, one win for Slovakia. Heading into this, though, those last couple of games, last time played, was in World Cup qualifying, um, and it was in Scotland. It was a 1 0 win for Scotland back in 2017. In October, Martin Skirtle with a big fat OG. Robert Mack uh, get himself sent off for Slovakia in a 1-0 win. Um, heading into this, of course, Scotland starting off okay. Uh, unbeaten in the, the first two games, drawing against Israel at home. Beating Czech Republic B team uh, um, uh, last time around. Meanwhile, the Slovakians are heading to this one. One draw of the past two games. 1.6 if you want to break it down. Bookies odds. Bookies odds. 11-10 uh, on for Scotland. They are the favourites. 11-5 is your draw. 10-3 uh, is your away win. This one's tough. Scotland, I, I need to see a convincing performance. I don't think I'll see a convincing performance. I'll, think I'll see a performance just enough to get the three points. And again, uh, keep them believing that they can get out of this group. Yeah, goodness gracious me. One, they win. Uh, wrap it up. It'll be Serbia up against Hungary. This will be the uh, first time that these two sides have played, according to my knowledge, as as uh, as these nations are exist. Uh, Serbia coming to this one draw of the past uh, two. Uh, Hungary coming to this one win of the past two as well. They did lose to, to Russia last time around. Uh, Serbia did draw with Turkey last time around. The bookies odds, 5-4 uh, on for Serbia. 9-4 to issue draw. 4-1 uh, is Hungary. Long shot on this one. I've got 0-0. Go on, nil, nil on this one. Go on, nil, nil. What do you guys think about it? Uh, that is what I think will happen in the Old Nations League in match day number three, part two. Of course, if you haven't checked out my match number three, part one, make sure you do so. That gives you updates on the tables, also updates to the Prediction League and also stuff like that. So that, my friends, is it. Be sure to stick around. Of course, we'll come back for match number four, part one and part two right here on the channel. Also, Euro 2020 predictions right here as well. Until then, though, please give the video some love and smash the thumbs up, smash the subscribe, and I'll see you all very, very soon. Stay safe out there, but enjoy your football.